hello everyone welcome to another video in the series of terraform on aws or terraform with aws for that matter uh, you have already seen that uh, how did we go ahead and uh, created an ec2 instance with the help of a simple terraform configuration file now what i want to do next is go ahead and make some changes uh, i'll show you that how terraform handles uh, such a change uh, we'll talk about two types of changes the first change uh, will happen from the terraform side so we may have a requirement that let's say you created an ec2 instance uh, you created it of t2 micro type uh, later on you want to change the instance type probably a valid scenario how can you go ahead and do that using terraform so we will look at doing that and then uh, the other one would be a change which may happen outside of um, outside of Terraform, right? Maybe let's say somebody has got access to this AWS account. The person logs in to this account via management console and goes ahead and changes something in this particular EC2 instance. So how can Terraform uh, handle that, right? So let's look at this one first. Uh, you can see this particular instance is there running. And here is my, uh, you know, uh, the machine from where I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, run my Terraform code. Just to be clear, this machine uh, where I'm trying to, you know, from where I'm trying to run the Terraform code is there in the Mumbai region, as you can see here. Whereas uh, the code which I'm running that targets AWS US East 1, which is Northern Virginia region. So that's why here I'm showing you Northern Virginia region, as you can see. Okay, let's consider that somebody has logged into this particular account. And as I said, this person goes and changes something, you know, for that matter, let's say this person goes and, uh, you know, maybe changes its value, value of this tag. So it is updated, you can see, but this update has been done uh, without knowledge of Terraform, right? I mean, Terraform does Terraform did not create this EC2 instance with these properties. This particular change has happened outside of Terraform's knowledge, we can say, right? So it's kind of a drift uh, from from what Terraform expects it to be. So I'm there, as you can see, I'm there in this uh, particular folder, uh, TF code, where all my, uh, mm, sorry, where all my files are available, right? Uh, main.tf is there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run terraform.apply again. So what terraform.apply would do, it would actually uh, check that, uh, number one, what is mentioned currently in the main.tf file, that also it will check. It will also internally see that, um, you know, according to the state file which Terraform maintains, what's the information there. And then it will try to check on the AWS side all the attributes of that particular resource. When it does all of that, it has figured out that there is some change. And what is that change? You can see it is giving me a plan. Terraform used the selected providers and created a plan. In this time, it is showing a tilt symbol. And till symbol means update in place, which means the resource will be updated without deletion, right? The, the resource which is there, the same resource will be updated, which means uh, maybe some property will be changed of that particular resource. So our resource EC2 instance, which is there, you can see here AWS instance, which means EC2 instance, the name of the instance is app server. Uh, this will be updated in place. And what will happen is, uh, this is the id and what will get updated is basically within tags there is a uh, there is a tag with the key name and its value is new value that will be changed to example app server instance because if you remember example app server instance is what uh, is what is mentioned in the main.tf file so if you are okay with this plan we have to say yes so i'll say yes and then Terraform will take necessary actions, interact with AWS, call necessary APIs, and it will achieve that change. So it is now doing that modification. It says one changed. Good. 
so here if i go and refresh i should see that it is changed back to example app server instance so this was one such scenario where uh, you know the change was done outside of outside of terraform's area right somebody can come and you know maybe make some change this is not an ideal thing uh, if you if you are provisioning and maintaining your infrastructure using an infrastructure as code tool ideally you should restrict the access of others or you know of or access of anybody to the uh, you know to the cloud console you should you should restrict it you should not allow that but even if that has happened you can go ahead and run this thing and figure out if there is some change you know ba based on what you had provisioned if something has changed it will tell you okay. now this was one stuff now let's say on the same ec2 instance which has been provisioned now you have a requirement that this ec2 instance should be modified some property of this instance should be modified let's say uh, your team member says that uh, i do not want a t2 micro instance i want a bigger instance i want let's say t2 small right i'm just taking an example it could be anything for that matter so what what would you do uh, you can go and open main.tf file and in this we will go ahead and edit the instance type value so let us go ahead and do that i will make it t2 small right so save this file let's look at it once again and you can see i have updated the file uh, and changed the instance type to t2.small now in order to implement this change on aws side i will once again run terraform apply now terraform will once again check the main.tf file state file and what is there on aws side and it will tell you the plan the plan in this case would be to update the instance right why update the instance because you know in case of aws if you want to change instance type you don't need to terminate the instance right you can go ahead and very well stop the instance and change the instance type and then start it again so the change which has been mentioned or the change which is required at this time is something which can be achieved without terminating the instance now you don't have to tell terraform to to do it in a certain way terraform is able to figure that out and is able to just give you the plan that this is the plan i'm gonna modify this ex this instance you know i'm not gonna delete it i'll just modify it and what will be modified that is mentioned here which is instance type the instance type will be changed from t2 micro to t2 small how how it will do that you can go ahead and observe the steps if you know it already you know how it does that right so if i like if i'm okay with this particular plan i'll go ahead and say yes right so i'm saying yes as i say yes if i go here and try to refresh let's look at it quickly you can see the instance has already gone into stopping state right you can see here it is now acting uh, or interacting with aws so the instance has gone into stopping state so it will get stopped in couple of seconds after that instance type change will happen from t2 micro to t2 small and then the instance will be started again right if you know let's say leave the terraform part if i ask you to do the same activity that here is an instance and uh, can you go ahead and change its instance type probably this is what you would also do you'll go ahead and stop the instance change the instance type and then start it again you can see it is stopped and the instance type is changed let's refresh it further it is now in the pending state so it should come up in running state in couple of seconds okay so here you can see 50 seconds elapsed and probably 10 more seconds and it should be back to running state so terraform was able to achieve this change without terminating the instance you can see the instance is still the same ccfc ccffc right so the same instance and you can see it has achieved this change without terminating the instance just a stop and start was required now terraform figures out that how would it achieve the change based on the type of change which you have asked for right 
there can be another uh, example here. Let, let me show you something. So uh, let's go here. I'll press on launch instances. And um, what I want is I want, uh, I want uh, you know, basically this AMI ID. So I'll just copy this AMI ID. OK, this is an AMI ID. And what I want to do is uh, basically go here. And I'll update my main.tf file. And I'll say, I don't want this AMI ID, which is ending with 1.5. Rather, rather, I want this AMI ID, which is ending with 9A, right? It's it's some other AMI ID. It is also, it is also an Amazon Linux. But I want this AMI ID. Now, here is my question to you. Uh, tell me if you have an EC2 instance with a certain AMI ID and if I ask you to go ahead and change the AMI of that EC2 instance, how will you go ahead and do that? Can you do it, number one? Uh, the answer is there's no straight way uh, method to do that. You cannot change the AMI of an instance, right? So in order to achieve that, it would require two steps. First, you will have to kind of terminate this instance and you'll have to create new instance with this uh, AMI ID, you know, whichever you require. So I've updated the main.tf file and then I'm going to say Terraform apply. And when I do this, Terraform will again go ahead and figure out, you know, what is available here and what is required. And it will present a plan in front of me. Wherever you see a red color minus and then uh, there is a plus symbol, it means destroy and then create a replacement. So basically the idea is that because the AMI has to change from this thing to this thing, it requires a replacement. And then if you will go ahead and look at it, it basically means that a new EC2 instance will be created. At the end, if you see, it is telling you one will be destroyed, one will be added. Are you okay with this plan? So you go ahead and say yes. Now, let's go ahead and see what does it result into. So first thing here itself, you can see it says destroying CCFFC. So if you go ahead here in the Northern Virginia region, and I'll just go to instances. Let's refresh this. You can see CCFFC is getting uh, stopped, right? This is basically going away. This instance will go away and it will go ahead and launch a new instance, right? Uh, and uh, the AMI ID there would be, you know, whatever, ending with 9A. So let's give it a couple of seconds and see the result. So now it has gone to creation state. So, so let's look at this. Let's refresh this. And you can see this one is terminated, CCFFC, and a new instance has been launched. And the, if you go ahead and look at the AMI of this instance, it is F9A. Right. So a um, couple of seconds more and this should be achieved. So basically, uh, we saw that how Terraform is able to figure out the path which it has to take right from the current state to the state which it has to achieve. And whatever is the whatever is the most optimum path or whatever is the most optimum way to achieve that, Terraform will go ahead and do that. Of course, it will present the plan to you before doing it. And if you like it, you can go ahead and say yes. Right. So this is how uh, Terraform uh, accommodates a change. Or if you want to do a modification, uh, this is how you can go ahead and update your files and then run Terraform apply again. And it will go ahead and do that modification. Sometimes it may also mean that it might also mean that you just want to, you know, you just want to change some values or some attributes, which will be like really non destructible. For example, certain values can be updated on a resource without uh, stopping it or without uh, terminating it. For example, we updated the tags. Uh, so such things are also possible. And sometimes uh, you might want to do certain changes, which would mean um, stopping of resources. Sometimes it would mean uh, deletion of resources and creation once again. So whatever is the path to achieve that, Terraform will figure that out. It has that intelligence inbuilt. It will figure that out and it will present the plan to you. 
right? Of course, if you have AWS knowledge, you would also know that. So um, that was uh, the content which we wanted to cover in this particular uh, video. Uh, I hope uh, you were able to understand this. Um, I'm sure you'll also go ahead and do this in your account and try to understand that how does this thing work, right? And once you are done with, you know, this whole thing and you just want to get rid of whatever you have created, you can go ahead and run Terraform Destroy, right? This is the final command for this particular video. When you run Terraform Destroy, it will go ahead and basically check that what resources are created currently because of your configuration file and it basically gives you the plan that it will go ahead and destroy one resource, right? So I'm okay with that. I'll say yes and it will go ahead and start terminating that instance. So that instance which will get terminated would be this one, 73C. So as you can see, it has gone into shutting down state. So I hope uh, this was clear. Um, we will meet again in the next video and we will try to cover some additional topics like how can you go ahead and use variables, um, how to uh, make use of a variable file and all those things. So stay tuned. Uh, if you're liking the stuff, please uh, subscribe to the channel and share it with others and make sure that you go ahead and practice it as well. Okay. Um, all right. Till we meet again. Take care. Bye-bye. Congrats on completing that tutorial. We have a lot more similar awesome tutorials on our channel which you can go through in the playlist section. Let us know what you think about our videos in the comment section. And if you like it, please do share it with your friends and hit the like button. Thank you.